Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Learn with Jason. Today on the show, we have Shelby Spees. Shelby, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Uh, I am really excited for today. So I, I, I was telling you before the show, um, usually when I do a, an episode of Learn with Jason, I'm like somewhat familiar with the material. So I'm just kind of pretending not to know what's going on. Uh, this episode, though, I literally have no idea what's going on. Like this is a completely new subject area for me. Um, mm -hmm. And so you can tell me anything and I'm going to believe you. So <laughs> <laughs> I'll be sure to confuse you extra hard then. <laughs> Good. The chat will definitely appreciate that. Mm -hmm. um, so for those of us who are not familiar with uh, with your with you or your work, do you want to give us a little bit of a background? Um, yeah. So my name is Shelby. Like Jason said, I've been working at Honeycomb since March. Um, and before that, I worked in DevOps, SRE, um, and on the application side of software development. Um, and um, my job as a developer advocate at Honeycomb is to help people um, have healthier experiences um, and healthier relationships with their production systems um, and make it easier to deliver business value while building software. And so um, observability is, is one tool in our tool belt to be able to do so. Um, mm. And so I'm really excited to talk about that today. I'm I'm really excited to talk about it because it's something that, um, you know, if, if you follow Charity Majors on Twitter, she has a lot of just amazing threads kind of talking about how much of a superpower adding observability is. Mm -hmm. um, so what's never, what hasn't clicked for me is, is it's very obvious that observability is not the same as just logging. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think where the disconnect is for me is I'm, I'm not a hundred percent sure like why it's not the same thing. Yeah. So um, the difference, but the, the, textbook definition of observability for software is, can you um, can you ask new questions with the same data? And the thing with logging and with traditional metrics is it's it's a very like static data data structure that mm -hmm. you can't like slice and dice in new ways. Um, you, your logs are, are, and especially your, your metrics, if you've ever used that C metrics to try and debug or do um, like benchmarking on, um, on like anything application level, mm -hmm. you have to be very, it's like hard coding the exact like axes of data that you you want to include. And so the idea with observability is you want to send lots and lots of fields in your structured data um, that, in, and, and you can use structured logs to, to support this. Um, and there's, there's a lot of different ways to do integrations with observability. Um, my favorite way is to do um, sort of framework level uh, integrations that know what, for example, an HTTP, re HTTP request looks like. Mm -hmm. um, but but the thing about the structured data is you need a, you need tooling that allows you to slice and dice that data later on in novel ways. So it's not just about the data structure; it's also about um, tooling that you can you can ask novel questions and you can start to interrogate your systems and learn new things, even for for things like that you would never think to log before. Um, and so. Okay. So good observability tooling supports sending a lot, like like big, wide um, structured events with a lot of context. And Charity talks about this a lot, where uh, you know just send everything, uh, and 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 then later on you you never know what might show up, uh, what might become relevant. And and so your tooling allows you to query by all these different sort of novel fields that you would never like you. Uh, like an arbitrary example is like I had no idea that users whose favorite color was purple were having a slower experience. You know, like mm. something that's like so arbitrary, right? Um, and then the structured data that you're sending also supports tracing um, because you can just build traces out of a um, out of the same data data structure. You just add a start time, a duration, and a parent child relationship, so you get that nice waterfall view. Oh, um, if you've okay. ever seen if you've ever seen that in um, tracing tools, and so and, um, and the yeah. way that that would work, like so, what what we're talking about here is mm -hmm. instead of the trace being something that comes out of the code, the trace comes out of having sent the data. So this would go across application boundaries even. Like if you were yep. logging from two different, like your your front end and your API, you could theoretically yep, exactly. get a trace all the way through? 
Yeah, that, and that's exactly how distributed tracing works is um, when you when you send, uh, when you make the uh, API call to your backend, you send along some of the trace data so that um, when that gets uh, sent over to your observability tooling, they can it can reconstruct the entire distributed trace. That's incredible. Um, yeah. I mean, in, in like, so the the teams that I've worked on definitely did not do that, right? So we got to play this game of kind of bug whack-a-mole where we would find a bug in the front end and then we would mm -hmm. kind of go to the back end and be like, did we get an error over here? Like, let's look at the logs. And then if we could find the error, we would like, is the timestamp about the same? Okay, let's, let's see if maybe we can reproduce this with, you know, and it was just, mm -hmm. it was completely it felt very like, I don't know, guess and hope for the best. Uh, yeah. that's, that's cool. Yeah. And, and that's exactly the, the debugging approach that like most software teams have to take where you're sending sort of disparate data that that's, it's not like you, you can't, you can't account for like this was one request between the front yeah. end and the back end. Um, it's, or like maybe if, if you, you're sending really, really rich, um, uh, logs, it's possible, but then you start to have to like make these cost trade-offs. Like, do we want to keep all these like super verbose logs? You know, it's really expensive to index and parse all of them. Um, you know, my, my log aggregation service is charging me, you know, so much money. And so um, versus having data that's just contextual and, and like upfront mm -hmm. where you already have like, you don't have to do all the string parsing because you already have like just the key value pairs that say like, oh, like we know what user this was, or we know what um, like the, the request path was, or we know what the API key was, if, if that's something you, you're gonna send. Um, and so uh, then you can start to query by these different fields across mm -hmm. all of your traffic. Uh, so not, so tracing is great for the, the very deep, like, okay, I know this, this is the part of the code that's a problem, um, and I want to go dig deep into see where, um, you know, what, what exactly was happening at that point in time. Mm -hmm. Um, and so all, all your context fields are really useful for that. But what if, if you have questions that are like, um, you know, where in the app is slow, which endpoint is the slowest or, you know, who is experiencing like the worst latency or who is experiencing the most errors or things like that. Yeah. That's, a, that's a question you want to ask across like all of your traffic over time. Um, and so your context fields allow you to slice and dice like a, in aggregate as well as in, in these very like narrow um, specific requests. Um, and so that's what observability is to me is being able to like seamlessly move between sort of these big broad questions yeah. um, and then narrow down into um, like, okay, this is weird. How often is this weird thing happening? And then you can like zoom back out and start to ask those like big yeah. questions again. That's, um, a, that's just... really cool. And so, so this, I mean, this sounds like a dream, right? Like this sounds like if, <laughs> if everybody mm -hmm. had this sort of, uh, if everybody had observability in their systems, it would be so much simpler to say like, Hey, we're having a weird production issue. Let's figure mm -hmm. it out. And you could just figure it out. So, um, What's what do you think has prevented people from kind of adopting this approach? What it, it I guess on the face of it, it sounds like it would be really challenging to get right. Um. Yes. So so there's two things that are challenging about it. One is the instrumentation side, where um, having good observability sort of requires instrumenting your code, mm -hmm. and um, it's it's been like people you already instrument your code people instrument their code with logs log lines and metrics and even just like your print print statements and your console.log um when you're like debugging locally that's a form of instrumentation um but we haven't had sort of standardized approaches to instrumentation that mm. support um observability and so but now in the last few years we've seen um open tracing and, and open census which have merged to become open telemetry which is um a framework or sort of a a, a protocol and a, an organization a, uh, around creating this this sort of vendor neutral standard for adding telemetry to your systems adding instrumentation cool. to to produce um telemetry that's that works across all these different vendors, you know? So before you might've been, um, you know, you're using one vendor and you install their agent um, to run alongside your app. Mm -hmm. um, 
you know, or if you want to use their, their, you know, proprietary package to instrument your code, you have to sort of weave that into like every part of your code base. And it, right. it becomes very expensive to add that and then remove it later on when you decide like, oh, we got, a, you know, a new contract with a different vendor. Um, and, and so like, it, it's, it's a, it's a very sort of, it can be a time consuming process and it can be kind of expensive on the development side. Yeah, for um, sure. And so that's why I'm, I'm really excited about open telemetry um, as like, like, especially in a few years, right now it's in beta and in a few years um, it's going to be like um, just the standard everyone's, excuse me, everyone's going to expect like, like um, framework authors are going to, um, you know, build open telemetry um, compatible um, instrumentation into their frameworks so that it, um, you can just flip a switch and, and send it to your vendor. And so for the, this is the project that's at opentelemetry.io, is that right? Yes. Yes, okay, exactly. I'm going to drop that in the chat for people to take a look at if they want. Um, so, I mean, this this all sounds amazing. And and so um, what you're doing at, at Honeycomb is mm -hmm. trying to make this more accessible to teams, right? And you're are you using OpenTelemetry under the hood? Is that? Um, so we're not using OpenTelemetry. When we built Honeycomb, OpenTelemetry wasn't around yet. Oh, okay. um, and there, there wasn't a, a like sort of vendor neutral approach to instrumentation that that we could use internally. So we built our own beelines um, to support to um, the kind of instrument instrumenting your code that we we thought would really shine when you send your data to Honeycomb. Okay. Um, what's different about Honeycomb is that our backend supports um, high dimensionality and high cardinality data. And so I'll explain these terms. Um, high dimensionality means you, you have sort of a data you, data object or structure that has a lot of fields. So, okay. um, so you, you say like like okay with you know my um, sort of an arbitrary. This isn't this isn't what you would send to Honeycomb, but like sort of an arbitrary object like my user. You know, normally have like an email and a you know first name last name and stuff. But what if you start adding like user favorite color and user eye color and user like um, every everywhere you've lived in the last like you know, 15 years and mm. user, like, how, you know, what, like, how many shirts do you own? What is each <laughs> shirt that you own? Yeah. You know, how many colored socks do you own? Like, like send pictures of all the socks that you know, like you start, you start to have these, um, all these different fields um, that like, maybe it's really important for your service to know exactly what pair of sock, like your users wearing today. Um, mm -hmm. So, um, so that's, those are all the dimensions, all the fields that you include with your, your data. Um, okay. and then high, high cardinality, cardinality is just how many possible values can a field have. Um, and so for your user email, that could be just like anything, right? Like there's yeah. millions and billions of emails out there in the world. Um, something like a build ID if, is, is continuously like incrementing, right? you you sort mm -hmm. of have infinitely you know, probably some limit, but potentially like infinite builds that you can have out there. And so um, to be able to filter by or query by a specific build ID is very, very hard. And a lot of traditional monitoring and logging tools don't support high cardinality on the back end. Um, okay. And so conversely, Honeycomb was built specifically to support this. Um, gotcha. And, and we had to build our own like, like, People say like, don't build your own database, but we have basically <laughs> had to build a, we call it a, a distributed column store. It's not a database, a distributed okay. column store in order to support um, querying for high cardinality fields. Um, and so so that's sort of the difference. And, and that's the thing that um, you'll see when, when we, um, if we get to the hopefully um I, I trust that we're going to get to the point that you'll be sending data to honeycomb and you'll I believe in exactly us. what this looks like um but yeah and so that's basically like the the why it's important to think about observability in this sort of unique way when it comes to software because um it's more than just like i have like metrics or I have logs, it's can I interact with the data I'm sending and ask like novel questions and um, learn new things mm -hmm. without having to deploy new instrumentation, without having to go in and add new lines of code. Yeah. Um, 
And so, and that allows you to, um, and this is something that like um, our customers do, that's something that we do internally where there's some incident or there's some issue and we go back from like a week ago or we go back to like last night, you know, the on-call person was able to mitigate the issue, but um, they weren't able to debug it um, entirely at like two in the morning. Um, and so the next day, you know, with a full night of sleep and some coffee, sure. um, we can go back and look at our telemetry data and it's it's has all the context there from from the issue back in two in the morning. Mm -hmm. um, so we don't even have to worry about trying to reproduce it um, quite yet. We have everything there from when it happened the first time um, versus like, I don't know if you ever had that happen before where people are complaining about your service and and you're like, OK, like, um, well, I think this is a problem. And then you deploy something to try and like monitor that. And oh my, it's yes. not. Yeah. Uh, yes. And um, Whack them all so debugging. What, it's my favorite. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's exactly what like observability protects you from. It's, 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 it saves you from all of that. Just like um, I like to call it armchair debugging when people are just like sitting at their desks, like, well, it could be this part of the app. So maybe, you know, this and that and this and that. And and um, and then they like add some add some new metrics and add some new log lines and turn mm. up, you know, the debug level and then. Um, and it's like totally just a completely different part of the system, right? Yeah. Um, and so, 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 so I'm really, I'm really excited to just like, it, it's like an order of magnitude more like productivity for engineers, and it, it's it's really, really exciting, nice. it's and, and like satisfying for us to to like really engage with our systems of production, not just when there's ish, issues and is incidents, but like just learning, you know, how users actually behave. Um, and, and, and so it's, it's just, it, there's just so much potential there. And I, I'm really excited because I, I think this is going to be just how we work, how, yeah. how high, high productivity um, engineering teams work the, over the next decade. So, um, so that, yeah, that's so really you know, exciting. Um, and we're already like, we haven't even started writing code yet and you're already getting a lot of love in the chat. Um, there's love for your, <laughs> your lights in the background, which I am also, I'm very jealous of that. That is super cool. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, but then Taylor says, uh, I always knew open telemetry was good, but all sorts of things just clicked in my brain after listening to Shelby and I'm an even bigger fan. Um, Yay. so we're, we're already making inroads. And then Swarlo says, I should not have used up my brain today. I I'm with, I'm with you there. This is a lot, right? But I actually, I think this is like, this is why I was excited to do this episode because I think mm -hmm. that what, what we just talked about, like what you just explained is mm -hmm. like a lot. Um, there's, there's so many moving parts. There's so much to get your head around, but that's what you're working to kind of abstract away with mm -hmm. honeycomb so that I, as the developer, I don't need to know all of that. Like it helps for me to understand it. But ultimately what I'm able to do now, and, and maybe we should just switch over and start doing this, but I, mm -hmm. I'm just able to like install this thing and I mm -hmm. get the benefits without yep. having to become an expert in instrumenting for observability. Yep. And that, that was exactly my experience. Um, I started following Charity on Twitter in like early 2019. Um, and I was I was just like so overwhelmed by all this terminology, um, all these like new concepts. I was like, I'm, you know, I don't, I'm not a, I don't have a master's in computer science or whatever. Like I don't understand this stuff, but mm. it, I, and so, and I, and I was what my, on my, on my last team, we were honeycomb users um, before I even started working at honeycomb. And so um, it got, I, and I, I remember being sort of like overwhelmed in the beginning. Like, I don't know what steps to take to do this. So um, part of mm. my job is making things easier. So you don't have to be an expert in all this stuff and you can just start getting the benefits right away. So yeah, let's, let's uh, dive in. Let's do it. So I'm going to switch over to pairing view and uh, we're, we're looking at a couple things right off the bat. So first, this is the open telemetry side. I dropped that in the chat. I will uh, I'll drop it in again for good measure. Um, I will also drop in Shelby's Twitter. Make sure you go follow her on Twitter. Um, and we are going to be looking at Honeycomb uh, and we're going to be adding it into Stream Blitz, which is my uh, my little like overlay package that we're we're looking at now that's actually a little bit broken i saw people doing boops in the chat i'm very sorry they don't work yet um, so we'll get there well, th this is why i need observability i have no idea what i broke and this will help me find it <laughs> um but before we dive into the code let's do a quick shout out to our sponsors the show today is being live captioned 
by uh, white coat captioning. And um, that is so great. I'm so happy to have that. That is available at lwj.dev slash live if you want to follow along with the captions. Um, and the live captioning is made possible by our sponsors, Netlify, Fauna, Sanity, and Auth0, who all generously kicked in to make this show more accessible to more people, uh, which I very much appreciate. So thank you to White Coat for being here. Um, and thank you to the sponsors for, for making this possible. And you can, as I said, head over to lwj.dev slash live to get that uh, in your browser. Um, so, all right, I have the Honeycomb site open. Let me drop that in the chat. Uh, I have Streamblitz. Let's, uh, let's open this code. And let's see here. Is this big enough for everyone to read? Let's see. Here's some, here's some code. Um, Shelby, is that legible for you? Yeah. That okay. Looks good. Great. So, um, so this is our our little server, and the way that this thing works is it's effectively a GraphQL API that uses TMIJS under the hood to send um, activity from Twitch. So it sends me. Uh, the chat, uh, if we run commands, it, it'll send the command data. Um, and then it has, uh, I, I think, I believe I have another command in here that'll get data or that might be built into the UI, but, um, that all runs. And then I have the, um, the new version of the scenes running here, which is a Jamstack site built in toast. Uh, which is Chris Biscardi's new uh, Jamstack framework that is like ESM first, which is very fun. Um, so that's been a thing I've been working on for a while. And the way that this all works under the hood is we have uh, the server running, which I can get. Or actually, I guess I should ask you like, what's the easiest way to get started here if we wanna if we wanna kind of um, dig in? Yeah, I I would start. Um, I'll share the docs with you. Okay. Um, for the, uh, the node beeline, um, our, the, so beeline is our sort of cute term for our SEKs that, um, hook up with your app and generate telemetry data and send it over to Honeycomb itself. Um, so what you're going to do today right now is you're going to add a package to your node app. Um, okay. You're going to add an API key to the configuration in your app.js file. And um, then uh, you're going to run your app and maybe hit some endpoints and watch data come in. Um, and Excellent. somewhere in there, I guess, before the API key, you need to sign up for Honeycomb. Okay. Uh, but And we have a free tier, so um, you can sign up and use it for free and send from dev and not even worry about that. All right. So I have, uh, I'm installing the beeline. And while we do that, I'm going to get started. Sign up with Google. Uh, let me pull this off screen. Okay. So I'm just logging in with my... Um, Google account, if I can find that, there it is. What? Oh no. Hold on. Got to get Google Authenticator out. Mm. Uh, hold, please. Uh, yep. <laughs> okay. Um, this one. Okay. So I have uh, I have signed up for. Honeycomb, and we will call this Stream Blitz. Or no, I have to. I have to create a new team. So I'm going to continue. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so I'm probably going to have to roll that after the yeah the um, stream. It's it's easy to change to in your team settings. In my team settings, and those mm -hmm. are uh, when you team settings. Your Okay. And so if I just edit, I'll be able to delete it from there. If you want to 
Oh, I guess um, I need to create a new one first. Okay, so I'm going to create yeah. a new key that I won't show anybody. And mm -hmm. then, uh, so we'll call this stream blitz. Uh, save it. I've copied that one and I'm deleting the other one. You hackers, you, you <laughs> dirty hackers. That's exactly what you are. Um, <laughs> okay. So now I've, I've just disabled that key and it cool. is gone. All right. So now, um, I'm going to go back to, I guess the dashboard. Oh, no, nope, That continues to show me the thing I'm going to. Yeah. So now it's just waiting for your data to come in. You can click around um, and there's some examples. Uh, there's some like, um, here's what this page does sorts of things. But okay. um, at this point, yeah, it's basically just, um, I think if you click the get data in button in the app, it'll just have like a little spinner, like we're waiting for your data. Right. And I think that showed me the API key. So I'm going to Oh uh, yeah, don't yeah. So don't share that. Yeah. So let's take a look That's at. A, mm -hmm. I think good what I can do here. About. Yeah, good. Mm -hmm. I can send my uh, honeycomb API key. Is that what you call it in your docs here? Um. Yeah. I mean, I think you oh, can. It's, not set. Yeah, I can it's call just it yeah. I want. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there is my honeycomb API key. It is saved mm -hmm. and now available to us. Mm-hmm. And that means that I can do the next step, which is here. Yeah. Top of my app JS before any require or import statements for other packages. Okay. We can make that work. So let me copy this. And I'm going to go to my server. Here's my index. Um, can I put it after dot env or? Um, I think, yes, I think you have to put it after .env for it to use your environment right now. Honeycomb API key. Uh, my data set, I don't think I had a data set yet. Yeah. Um, so you're going to create, when you send your first events, it'll automatically create your data set. Um, so you can sort of just call it whatever you want. Um, usually just the service name, like, yeah. Or just yeah, exactly. Is that okay? Like to tell me like which part of the stream blitz stack it's coming from? Or is yep. that is that how you would do it? Or um there are a few different ways to organize your data sets. Um if you if you want to separate them by service, um, I would do it that way. If you want to separate them by environment, let's say you have a development environment development data set and a production oh, data set. Okay. Um a lot of teams do that, especially if you're using distributed tracing. Um okay. So that's actually a, a thing that we're right now we're in the process of making um, our onboarding docs a lot more straightforward um, and give a little bit more guidance around the, the naming and stuff. Um, but okay. yeah. So mm -hmm. that makes sense. So uh, right now I, I, this service is just for me. So I do everything in production. So I'm only going to have one data set. Um, cool. And then the service name is the one that I chose, right? When I created my team. Mm -hmm. Oh, what's up, Chris? Um, Thank you for the sub. The, <laughs> the service name is um, what you're going to query. By. So actually, this would probably be Streamblitz server. Um, and that's where you would separate your front end and your back end. Oh, OK. OK, so these are both arbitrary. I can choose whatever I want them to be called. And like the API key is what ties it to the actual service. Yes. Yeah, because you Got don't it. you don't actually need to tell it your team name because it just gets that from the API key, like you said. And saying that out loud, of course, that totally makes sense. <laughs> um, okay. But no, th see, I love I love doing this though because this, this is exactly the kind of like friction that new users experience, and I just sort of take for granted. Like, well, of course, you would name your data set that you know kind of thing, but mm. um, and, you know. But naming naming is important, and as as developers, we really care about names we give things. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it's worth it's worth discussing. Okay, so I've got this, and I'm just gonna save it. And now, should I just run this, and we'll start getting data? Um, run it, and then I think you have to hit like your um, root path or something. Okay, so I'm gonna run this, and we can we can see if it shows up from just the. Uh, 
Did it pick up? Oh, I'm in the, wait, am I in the right place? Core, I need to run the server. I think I ran the wrong thing. Oh yeah, I need to run dev. Uh, NPM run dev. What don't you like? Oh, I'm in the wrong. Okay. How about now? Okay, so we've got localhost 9999. And then if I go to the right browser window, I should be able to open up the, uh, the server here. And we should be able to do a subscription um, and that subscription will be for a message and we can do like the message name and like, let's grab the author. Okay. So now, oh, it has required fields. Even that should show up the field name uh, argument. Mm -hmm. Oh, let's see. channel. That one. How about this? Is this going to work? There we go. So now, if y'all uh, chat, it should show up here. This this should be the the Streamblit service running. And if I collapse this error, there it is. See, so this is this is the running service. And so what you're saying is that now I should be able to actually see data in Honeycomb. Mm -hmm. Okay. So my back end is here. Um, so go ahead and click on data sets. Yeah. And hmm. Uh, let me pull this off for one second just to make sure that I have the right data. Waiting for data. Okay. So did I do something? I clearly did something wrong, but it's unclear what thing. Mm. I've also done all sorts of weird things to this app, so it is possible. Like my app is here, but mm. then I use Apollo server to um it like gets applied as middleware to the Apollo server, the app does. So we're actually doing like a like a server.listen instead um, of a standard thing. So maybe I'm maybe I'm out of the beeline happy path here. Huh. Let me That's certainly possible. Um and if we want to, if we want to just get data to show, um, we can create like a custom event um, just in somewhere that's going to definitely run okay. when you start your app. Um, and so it would probably look like that. Yeah, like beeline. Here. Yeah, start span. Okay. Um, and then to get that in, I need to do a beeline, all right? And so up here, can I just do like this? Or do I need um, to include it again? I think that should be fine. OK. And so then once I have yes. that, I can do this beeline with span. Okay. Um, and let's have it run like here. And we'll say, hello, chat. Um, and we can do like a, just any like arbitrary whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so we can do something like return just return some text. Okay, so now that's running, it rebooted for us. Mm -hmm. 
And so theoretically speaking, that should do the thing. So let me reload the page out here. And did you do any things? My redirect is not not doing anything. Is it getting data? Hold on. I'm wondering now if it's not loading the environment variable. Honeycomb API key. Did I typo this? Honeycomb API key. Mm. Um, let's... Are you doing any things? Okay, so it is it is running. Mm -hmm. um, so that's good. But it's not sending to Honeycomb. Mm -hmm. And it's not doing that because why? <laughs> Don't know. Mm. Am I using the right API key? Ooh, did you copy the, the one you just saved? It's entirely possible that I did. Let's stop and restart. Maybe I'm sending it to like the old key. Um, and let's try this again. It says we're waiting for data. No, oh, it's still... Yeah. Uh, okay, so here's what we're going to do. I think I'm just going to roll this API key at the end. Let's bring this over yeah. so that we can see what's going on. And uh, mm -hmm. so I'm going to make sure that the API key is coming out at all. Um, so we'll just log that and uh, process.m.honeycomb API key. And are we getting it? Let's check here. Okay, so we do get an API key, mm -hmm. um, but it's still not showing us data. Is there any way to, like, does this return anything if I try to log out the result or anything? Uh, yes. Although I'm not a Node developer, so I'm, I was hoping I could lean on you for that part. Okay, but so... I'm pretty sure <laughs> the B-Lions will return a... Um... So it just returns the... It returns the, the actual thing, like what mm -hmm. we returned. And that's good. Um... You might have to so you might have to start and end the trace. The B lines are because of because um, like Node behaves differently from like Ruby or Java. Mm -hmm. um, some some of the B lines you have to when you create custom events you have to like tell it to finish the trace um, or finish the span. So you might be opening the span and not closing it. Oh, okay. All right. So let's try that. Oh, start span. So we can. Oh yeah, you have to do a beeline dot finish span. I think. And then if I do like a beeline dot finish. Start span, and then dot finish span. Oh, mm -hmm. dot finish span. Oh, okay. I get it. I get it. Um, so I'm starting a span and we'll just log that and then yeah. I can finish the span. Um, and so for, for those in the audience who don't know what spans or traces are, Results um, spans not. are oh. the, yeah, I think you might need to start a trace, finish a trace and then do the, are you doing a width span or a start span? I did a, a start and a finish on this one. Um, just based okay. on the the example that was here, I, mm -hmm. I missed this part where it showed how to finish it. So that's that's okay. my fault. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so we've got a span. 
We've started and finished. Did we get data? Oh no. No, I think the span needs to be inside a trace. Okay. Um, so we can then trace equals beeline start trace. And do I just start it or do I have to put something in it? Um, it looks like there is a value they, in here. Yeah, you can add arbitrary trace level fields, but I don't think it's required. Okay. So, Yes, and, it, and it, this will make a lot more sense once we see the visualization. Finish trace, trace, uh, right? I love this, though, because this is, uh, yeah. Finish trace, OK. Finish. So now we've started a trace. We did a thing. We finished the trace. And now do we get data? OK. Do I need to? So someone in the chat said that your subscription events don't end. Well, the, that... trace, the trace yeah. part, though, this all happens part before we even ends. start yeah. the server. Yeah. Um, I mean, I can stop it and see if it makes a difference. Uh, let's see if yeah, that did yeah, that makes. I'm like, nah. Um, Express user context. Just, just studied the node beeline a little bit more. Um, see, this morning I tested this out on an example app, and it works great. So, <laughs> I, <laughs> um, let's see, instrumentation name. Oh, do I need to tell it to the data set is optional. If you do not specify a data set, it'll, it'll default to node.js. Express. Enabled instrumentations. Oh, do I need to do this? I think they're enabled by default. Uh, if you want to disable automatic instrumentation. Yeah. Okay. Because I, I literally for the for the app I did this morning, and I might just have you try that, um, because I I don't know your GraphQL setup enough to to help you, but um, I did the quick install and I got data in. Um, okay, let's let's go ahead and do that just to to make sure yeah. that we um, that we've got something here. Uh, yeah. So which where did I where would I find that app? Um, it's the real world um, Node Express example. Oh, so it's not it's not there. It's not a honeycomb. It's um, real world Node Express. This one. Oops. This one. Yes. Okay. Um, or that might be a fork of it. Here. Think, uh, Thinkster? Yeah. That's the one you want? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, sorry, I'm, I'm between two computers. So the chat on the one that I'm, that our call is on oh. is not available to me on the one that I'm working on. So yeah, I, I have to like, sense. yeah. Um, okay. 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 So let's, cool. let's get this thing cloned and downloaded. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to do that over here. We'll go back this way and we're going to get clone this, get into it with the Node Express, um, and then let's just open it up and take a look. OK, so we have an Express app. Um, it looks like we've got quite a bit going on. So there's like Mongoose and MongoDB in here. Um, hopefully, it doesn't make me I think I have Mongo. I guess we'll find out. Um, so let's. I probably need to read the instructions. How about that? Um, yeah. <laughs> NPM install. 
npm install, and then I think, yeah, npm run dev. I think I have MongoDB. We'll find out soon, I guess. Mm. Um, and then worst case scenario, we do have a play demo data set at Honeycomb. Um, but I always like being able to poke at the code and mm -hmm. at the um, at the tool. OK, I do have that. And um, so I probably need to start this Mongo container. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't think you need to start that. I think um, as long as you have Mongo running locally. OK. Um, oh, you know, probably the container is, has interesting data in it, like as test data. But um, oh, this will okay. get data into Honeycomb. Um, okay. So so there, so it works. Um, so let's add Honeycomb to this, the way we added it to your other app. Okay, um, so I'm going to grab this wholesale. And we can drop it right at the top. And I'm doing it like it says in the docs with, um, change this to LWJ. Uh, OK, so this is a bat, uh, honeycomb beeline. We've got our right key in here. Um, mm -hmm. We've got a data set, think... service name. And Does hopefully, it... it's going to know about your right key because it's local to your entire environment, right? It's not just it's um, definitely not. Like, so why don't we uh, for the sake of like we've already we've already blown this environment variable and I'm yeah. gonna have to roll it anyway. So I'm just gonna put it straight into the code. Cool. And we'll we'll deal with that part later. So here's our uh, API key in place. That's all running. And if we look at Module, ooh, which module is not found? Oh, I have to install Honeycomb. OK, so let's npm install Honeycomb. And then we'll start it again. OK, listening on port 3000. So let's go hit port 3000. Oops. Not whatever that route was. OK. I so think if you do, yeah, slash API slash API. something. Um, but it'll still, that should show up in Honeycomb. If that doesn't show up in Honeycomb, I'm, I'm going to be really surprised. OK. Oh, there's like a whole routes. Routes everything. Yeah. Let's... Mm -hmm. It's a it's an uh, MVC sort of uh, API for um got it yeah like okay. a medium medium clone yeah articles yep and because we didn't stand up the mongo uh docker image we don't have actual data but that's totally fine because we don't really mm -hmm. need that for our purposes here let's yeah. see if we've got data may refresh huh i wonder maybe i set up my api key wrong because i was just clicking buttons and not thinking about it very hard. So maybe maybe what I did was, uh, let me create one. Ooh, you disabled creating data. OK. Wait, did I? Yeah. It, it Or the other one, I don't think it said oh, create data sets. what? <laughs> OK. Oh my gosh. OK, so everything was fine. And it's just me not doing things right. OK, um, so maybe we should just try this one again. And let's see if this happens. Uh, good. All right, well, but I mean, this is good news. This is, this is because I uh, don't know what I'm doing and not because something was actually wrong. <laughs> All right, did, this, uh, did we get data? Let's go look. Look at it happen. Uh, you got to go back to yeah. Oh my god, OK. <laughs> we did it, everyone. so much better. Yeah. <laughs> Because I was like, it can't be. I mean, even if you just hit like work. without the GraphQL. This is, the, but honestly, like what we just did is we proved why I'm not allowed within a thousand miles of DevOps. 
<laughs> People are like, oh, soft core liability, get this guy out of the room. <laughs> I, uh, I'm wearing my DevOps engineer shirt today. I don't know if you can like see it there. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's a great shirt. Yeah. Um, Firebase sent it to me. I got it from one of their events. So. Excellent. Okay, so I'm I am mm -hmm. so happy that that was just me doing something wrong and not uh, and not like some bizarro bug. Uh, okay, so but this is great because now what we have is we we should have uh, this came out of of uh, Streamblitz and not out of that demo app that we made. So mm -hmm. we should be able to look at real data here. So I'm going to stop that Thinkster app and we'll just hang out on this one. Mm -hmm. um, and so now that I have some data what like what would i do well i guess where do i start like what's the yeah um so we would normally see that in this view this is sort of the the data set overview for your stream brits stream blitz prod data set mm -hmm. um and you you um at the top you can see the the visualize where group by order by that's your query builder okay. um and then below that, the suggested queries for this data set. Um, since you don't have a lot of data yet, we're, we're not really giving you interesting queries yet to try. But um, here we can see the overall distribution, distribution of latency, um, how slow are things, and the events that you've set. Um, so go ahead and click on that where it says heat map. Uh, the, the graph, yeah. And you should probably also close the sidebar just to the the gray the dark gray sidebar just to make it a little easier for people how do i do that the, uh, i think if you scroll down um there should it might be because you're zoomed in so much it, that might be a little bit yeah anyway oh that, there it you is. can close okay, that side yeah yeah i i do have the site um but i'm on a like a small resolution too so i yeah okay um so so you see on the very um, right hand side those three little tiny boxes um those are the events that you sent uh or it's for the heat map it's sort of when some something was sent for this period of time and okay. how slow that was um i also like to do in, in the at the top in the visualized box we're just gonna um i'm gonna have you type in something uh type in uh where sorry uh where it says visualize in the query builder so scroll up here yes okay um and then you're gonna type yeah count or just click on count okay and that's just the number of events and so you can click run or you can do a shift enter whichever is easier for you um and now you should see two graphs oh cool okay Mm -hmm. So then if I run uh, this, um, now like chat events and stuff should go through. I'm actually curious if the chat events are going to get traced because mm -hmm. that'll be really interesting if they just, if it like just works. Mm -hmm. Chat, where are you when I need you? Yeah, here we go. Mm -hmm. Yes, you should absolutely be spamming chat. That is correct. <laughs> um, okay, so we've got, we've got some data coming in and if I rerun the query, mm -hmm. let's see what happened. Mm -hmm. I also yeah, might we have got a bunch of events. Ooh. Cool. Can you scroll all the way up um, and click on the where it says last two hours? And we'll just do last 10 minutes. OK. Uh, so we can zoom in a little bit. And and yeah. And so there's a whole bunch of events. And so let's just click on one of those. Um, yeah. Any, any of those circle dot things, perfect. OK. And so that takes us through to a trace. Um, and so this is a trace with a top level root span and no child spans. Um, and so that what this tells me is either it's not picking up it, like you're not, the way your app is set up, doesn't use our auto instrumentation is probably okay. the case or, um, yeah, no, that's actually probably the case. Um, I had this happen with the um, Express app that I was doing, but it's because I was hitting, oh, I was hitting the root path and so the API slash articles or whatever. Um, and so the articles looked great. Um, and then the 404 from the root path was like not really interesting. Um, so, but yeah, you're scrolling. I, I saw you scroll down the fields in the sidebar. Mm -hmm. um, and so that is all 
the context fields I was talking about earlier that um, we're automatically sending with your HTTP requests. Um, so things like user agent, things like um, request path are mm -hmm. handy to um, query by um, status well, and, I, and I'm already thinking of things that would be super useful. Like, for example, we can see that this was sent over HTTP. We can see that mm -hmm. this was sent on localhost. If I'm debugging production data, I would immediately strip all of that. So if somebody's like running a local server and trying to hit our APIs and getting weird bugs, like mm -hmm. they're they're not following, they're not using our tools anymore. So I can kind of ignore that in my like, oh, what a weird edge case. Like I don't care if mm -hmm. you if you're hacking our system, like whatever, get out of my yeah. data. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And and that's actually a thing that comes up with um a few a few of our users who have pen testers and they'll they'll see that the pen testers are just sending junk data mm -hmm. um and, and it'll show up in honeycomb as, as part of the fields. And so it's like, oh okay, we, we know to like, you know, uh turn get take take away that person's access or whatever. It's it's like really clear that that's what's happening. Mm -hmm. Um yeah. So um it looks like um so we, we can go back to the query view. Um, query results. Uh, so this is the trace view. And yeah, the, that's the query results view. And um, can we run and just see? Yeah, not a lot's happening since then. Um, yeah, I wonder. I think, the, mm -hmm. And this is the kind of stuff where like I, I need to instrument this for real because I think I get yeah. like odd timeouts and, and all those good things. Um, so yeah. we can start adding um, like deeper traces and custom fields. I would, uh, yeah, I would love to kind of look at how we could do that, um, especially when we get into kind of more more custom data. So, mm -hmm. like for example, um, we have this TMIJS chatbot, and it does something like uh, we like listen to connection states and and stuff mm -hmm. like that and you end up with like one client per connection mm -hmm. um and the way that i'm doing this now i think it works not super clear if i'm like duplicating this and creating a million tmi clients whenever somebody mm -hmm. tries to send a chat um and the flakiness points to the fact that i'm doing something wrong but it's been very difficult to figure out what or why mm -hmm. it's been mm -hmm. flaky um and like, you know, this is being demonstrated right now on the, the overlays where uh, Nikki's comment is there. I don't know why that one showed up and none of the other ones showed up. It's completely unclear to me what happened and why that's happening. <laughs> yeah. Um, so one thing I want to make sure first is that the top level um, trace is, is being generated for, sure. for this part of the app. Um, so do you know how to like just hit that and, and make sure it shows up? This one should have, yeah, this one definitely should have already happened. So if I'm looking, oh, okay. yeah, where would we, we look for, for it? for that. Okay, great. Yeah. And I do that through. Um, if you scroll back up, um, I would just do, yeah, where, um, or even a group by. Group by. And looking through your fields, uh, it might be a. It's something. So this is the auto instrumentation, um, and it would be hopefully something that your art that's already being sent. Um, oh, so I yeah, I just did arbitrary stuff. Um. Oh no no um. Oh, okay. So th those are the events. Because I, I thought I thought it was also getting the um, the chat events as well. I or... don't. So I think what it's getting with the chat events is um, like whenever a request comes in through the. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see how this is going to work. It would be when a command comes in, um, it will send off a request to load any any commands that are registered with it and then it will mm -hmm. like execute that command which it sends 
out. And so I, I think we might be getting some like GraphQL is, is getting data in and out through the subscription. And I think that might be getting somewhat auto instrumented, but not, I'm not a hundred percent sure. Um, okay. Yeah, they, this is um, the, this what? is the part where I've kind of melted my brain, right? Because we're we're doing yeah. web sockets and Express and GraphQL and and like a an event like an IRC engine, basically. Um, mm -hmm. uh, um, one way to check that is to see what, or the way I would check is to see if in Honeycomb, if all of your events have that hello. Um, field okay because you add um so i would just group by field like field one i think was one of them and then hello was one of them okay and it looks like um, i don't think i'm not even sure it's sending that part yeah um, that's real oh, it didn't, it didn't like that um go ahead and remove the custom trace you added remove the from custom. your code yeah. Um, okay, it's, it's out of and there. And then, yeah, and then we'll see if new events show up from the auto instrumentation. Okay. Um, and that'll tell me whether we need to do a whole lot of custom stuff or just a little bit of custom stuff. All right, so we have restarted this i'm reloading the page um let's run just like a regular query and see what happens too so i'm gonna get the channel mm -hmm. and we'll get the description and the status and the stream just trying to get a some of the data here um mm -hmm. oh, i need to actually include one so this is data about the stream itself. Um, so here's where we are right now. Mm -hmm. um, that should have given us some data. So let's run it. And here are... There. It's not some new stuff. Yeah, it looks like a bunch of new things happened. Um, where... Okay, so what... Uh, what I would... Do, let's do a group by request path or group by, um, because that's not interesting. Request dot post path query request dot query should okay. should be your GraphQL query, right? Um, and then scroll down to your query. Okay, then no, that's not okay. Well, um. That's fine. Um, and this is where well, those are old now. Let's see what time is it. Maybe I need to run it again. Yeah, do it. Rerun the query. Um, no, yeah, go ahead and click on one of those. To serve any any of those events in your um, in the graph. And we'll just look at the sidebar and just see what fields show up. Yeah, so we got QL, GraphQL. Yeah, so it is sending Post. data because that was from a minute ago. Request, it's not. Hmm. And it looks like the the query I think is maybe not getting auto picked up because I. Mm -hmm. I think this would just fail if that uh, if mm -hmm. that was the case. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. This is run that again and then go back here. Run that query again. These happened at what Just time? Just now. Just okay. now. This trace mm -hmm. had multiple spans without parents. There Beautiful. Oh, that's perfect. Okay. What this tells us is that um, all of this happened in the same request and the same trace with the same trace ID. Um, but there's something a level above that that's mm. not getting included in the trace. Okay. Um, 
unless unless it's doing something asynchronous. Sometimes when it's asynchronous um, and you click on the the trace too quickly in Honeycomb, it just hasn't gotten all the data yet. Um, so there might be some earlier. Definitely possible that that's the case. Um, oh yeah, yeah, there we go. I don't know how. It's not complaining anymore. Oops. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. So there, there you go. There's your a, a little bit more interesting trace. Yeah, and so um, this ends up going off to Twitch, and so that and that makes sense because we're hitting the um, the API for for that. Uh, mm -hmm. We're hitting. Yeah, good. Look at it go. Cool. Yeah. Um... So can you think of, um, so you, you know where this happens in the code more or less. And so can you think mm -hmm. of any like custom fields that you would want to add um, to like answer questions that you might have about this part of the app? Yeah, uh, we can do that with, um, let's go to our Twitch chat. Where do I actually send this? Like I need to get my Twitch data. And I'm doing that in my schema, probably. And that happens here. So I would want to, oh, not in there. Get Twitch. OK. So in here, what we would probably want is like we could track by which user. That would make sense. Because mm -hmm. um, then mm -hmm. we can see like who's requesting what. Mm -hmm. um, cool. So let's see how to do that in with the node B line. Um, it would probably look like um, for adding context to an existing span. Yeah, B line dot custom context dot add or B line dot add context. Beeline.addContext. Oh, okay. yeah, Beeline.addContext. So let's try that and see. Okay. Um, so up at the top, I grab Beeline. I guess we can put that with the here. Then I get Beeline. And then down with my get Twitch, I would want to do Beeline.addContext. And we can say Twitch username is username. And that seems right? Yeah. Oh, no, I did it wrong. Beeline.customcontext.add. Um, no, I think add context is right. Uh, so the custom context.add is um, a trace level field. Oh, so, oh, so oh okay. you can do either. I got um, it. You I can understand. do either. Yeah, cool. Okay. So I've added context and I'm and so mm -hmm. now we should get a Twitch username. Let's make sure I'll just stop and restart it just in case. Mm -hmm. Let's go out here and we'll rerun this channel. Okay. So that did it. Mm -hmm. And then in here, I'm gonna go back this way, run the query again. Here are our new ones, I think. Yeah, those are new. Yes. And so then um, did we get our Twitch username? QRST. Yeah, and you can even search. Twitch username. Haha. <laughs> Beautiful. Awesome. And so so now here actually I could do like where oh wait. Or a group by even group by Twitch username, and then you'll see them. I need to for... reload to get this to work. Group by Twitch username. I so this might have been working before, and I just needed to refresh the page. <laughs> um, but no, this is. And then yeah, yeah. Look at it go. Okay, so this is really cool because then if uh, if someone else hits this for like a different channel, um, mm -hmm. and I think we can do this by looking at. Like twitch.tv, we can see who is live right now. Um, 
let's look at this one, make sure it's muted. Uh, and we will make a request for this channel. Okay. And then we can come back in here and rerun. And now we've got data for both. And so this is, that, that's really cool. Mm -hmm. And that's really handy from, from my standpoint too, because I'm like, I'm, I'm already thinking of things that are going to be really useful for me because I have different parts of this app that I've built. And it mm -hmm. would be interesting to see like, what are the ones that are actually, you know, where are things failing? Because clearly something mm -hmm. is failing um, with different parts of this, which is why like, my boop drop doesn't work anymore. There's a, I built a mm -hmm. thing where every time someone uses the boop emoji, it's supposed to mm -hmm. fall from the top. That has started mm -hmm. failing. I don't know why. Um, <laughs> and eventually I got to fix it. Uh, but being mm -hmm. able to figure out like, where did that actually fall off as opposed yeah. to what I'm doing now, which is, you know, as you, as you were talking about before, like maybe it's this, let's deploy it and see what happens. Um, mm -hmm. This is, I can already see how much this is going to help me. Yeah. And and I'm really excited that the the auto tracing worked for you because um, that's sort of the experience with a lot of um, with with both VLANs and with Open Telemetry uh, with popular frameworks like Spring and Rails and um, Express and and I think GraphQL um, things um, that it it builds the traces for you so that you can just go in and add fields like the one you just added mm -hmm. um, that it, that's relevant to the context of that part of the code. Um, and and so, and what I love about the sort of you know, beeline dot add context or add field um, is it's not that it's not more complicated than like adding a print statement or something. Um, so it's, and it's, you're already thinking about what your code is doing. And so, it's, so you already know like, oh, this is probably going to be important. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so yeah, so that's, that's really exciting for me. And that's, um, and, and so I'm glad to see like, you're already just sort of the, the, it's clicking and then the fireworks are going off for, yeah. for the different parts of your app. Well, and, and so check this out. Like here's, here's the thing that I know is going to bother me, um, mm -hmm. which is like, can I, can I just put in like arbitrary, I guess I would just put in whatever, like message. Yeah. Um, and then I can say like new channel created for, or I guess connection. Mm -hmm. And drop this in. Um, and then, you know, do like whatever we can do all sorts of things here, but I'm just, I'm thinking already about mm -hmm. like, this is an issue that I've got, which is this is only supposed to run once, but I'm mm -hmm. not sure that that's true. So then I can come out here and I can go to my subscription and like run this. Mm -hmm. And then theoretically speaking, now mm -hmm. when anyone chats, um, ahem, chat, <laughs> <laughs> uh, there we go. Yeah. Um, yeah. So now that we've got someone chatting, then, mm -hmm. and thank you for bailing me out on that, Shelby. <laughs> 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 then we can come back here mm -hmm. and run this query and then I can do something like I want to group instead of Twitch username. Maybe I want to group mm -hmm. on the, I think I need to refresh. Mm -hmm. I want to group on message. Mm -hmm. Oh wait, has it not showed up yet? Um, mm. And so these are interesting too, because I, I need to figure out like they come in totally without other information, which leads me to believe that these are like the TMI events. Mm. Um, so then here, one of those, what about this one, this longer one? You can also go to the traces tab um, in your query results. Uh, so just back, yeah, to the, and then scroll down and it'll show you all the way down. Um, Ooh. It'll show you the shape of the traces and the the ten slowest traces in your time window. Um, okay. And so, clicking on the little icon or the the trace ID mm -hmm. URL or link um, is yeah. And so these ones are yeah. all like one mm -hmm. 
thing. Just that top not... span, yeah. Um, so there, you're probably going to have to go in and add a little, add some custom traces or custom spans to wrap around that part of your code. Yeah. Um, but you've you've created a custom span before, so um, yeah. Uh, so so that, that should be pretty straightforward. It's still really interesting that this is like just the the fact that this is possible at all is is very very cool to me. Um, mm -hmm. And so if I want to do a, a custom span, then I can go down to this part here, adding spans, um, and it was this. And so yeah, start if we span. Mm -hmm. go down in here. And, and so what it usually looks like is the start span is before that part of your code and the finish span is after. Got um, it. So it wraps around the entire block of code. Okay. So then I can I can put this here. Um and then finish the span. I guess this kind of this kind of does its whole thing. Um so that one's not this isn't a great example, but we can we can put it in anyways. Um, do I have to start a trace? Um, no. If you saw the top level span and for for this part of the code, and you just didn't see the nested spans, then it should already be inside of a trace. Okay. Okay. Um, so I'm going to refresh this page. I'm going to run the query, and we're going to look for message. Still not there. Is this running? I think I might have just not started it. Okay, so let's run the query again. Now we've got some of these, so I'm going to refresh. See if I can get message. Those are new. Still doesn't like my. It's also entirely possible that this part of the code is just straight up doing something weird. Because um, the whole thing happens like, this is the part that I get confused by because it's I'm going mm -hmm. from like point A to point C back to point B and then looping around to point A again. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I would, and, I would say if we're not sure, then um, let's just start a trace on around this the span and just make a new trace because... Um, it might not be picked up by the beeline automatically. OK, so I'm starting my trace, and then beeline finish trace. Ooh, um, your code isn't inside your span. Oh, is it? does it have to be inside the span? Yes. Oh, OK, OK. Yes. Um, that yeah. is so that it, whole it's thing like, is. Hmm. How am I going to do that? Let's see. So let's do this, and then so this is just going to return whatever. So the the trace is basically like a pass through. Mm -hmm. So whatever I return before is what it will return if I if I wrap the thing with it. Um, it's here's the um, if you look in the beeline docs, I just want to make sure we're on the same page. Um, the adding spans to a trace or starting new traces section, okay. Um so we start a trace, and then we start a span. Um, and you see how um, a little bit below that. Uh, Let's here span, with you the... can start span. Yeah, add the fields. And then you're doing some file writing in your example. Mm -hmm. So so that's just where your code would live. Um, or the, the width span for asynchronous stuff. OK, so um, I, I think I need width span because this is yeah. asynchronous. So we're going to go beeline 
with span mm -hmm. and then I just return this and in here mm -hmm. I can I don't know how that's gonna work but we will cross that bridge when we get to it so let's get this part out of here get this part out of here and instead we need to finish this around the width filter which is here hold this with filter um We'll call this um, like subscribe. And then I need to figure out how to get this part. Here's our variables. And then we create our chat bot, good. And then we've got our payload and our variables, good. And I did this at the wrong place. Nope, what did I get wrong now? Message. Oh boy. Payload and variables. Unexpected token Twitch message. Okay, I'm gonna get here eventually. Mm. We've got. Does does it make sense why you wrap the span around your code though? Um, that's what gives you the start time and the duration, um, for that chunk of code. Yes, it does. Okay. It does make sense, and I'm just trying to figure out where the get all that curly braces it. go. And the parentheses, yeah. I did it. Okay, so that should have worked. And if I look at this, we should see that it's done that. And assuming all went well, then I should be able to go here and run this again. Let me reload the page so we get a fresh one. And hey, hey. okay, so that worked. And so then if we come back in here and we rerun this, we see all sorts of new traces. Let's do, I'm going to reload and I'm looking for, I called it GraphQL. I know that you're here. Where did you go? Um, let's look at the traces down here. And all of these are like the same thing. These are requests. These aren't my GraphQL things. So I am unclear on why hmm. It might just be like GraphQL subscriptions do not play well with this, but I'm still super confused as to how this could return and function and not log like anything. Mm -hmm. Do I have to end the span with a with span? I don't know. Um, I don't think so. I'm so used to living in like Java and Ruby and Python, where I'm I'm like rarely doing this asynchronous stuff. Um, yeah. So it it honestly it might just be that I'm like not remembering how Node works, which is yeah. I think uh, with trace with span, it's running. So it says 
with span, object, yes. and then a function that returns, okay, after you've added all the spans, so do I, I still need to start a trace? I think you might need to start a trace still. Okay, so let's do that. I'm going to uh, how do I do that? The async stuff is hard. Mm -hmm. So I'm returning this object, which has the trace inside of it. And it's that's being exported. And so maybe then when I get my resolvers, create resolvers, I'm calling that here. So maybe I like beeline start trace mm -hmm. and beeline finish trace. And I need to capture that. Whoops, this one. The other thing I'm wondering is if you're, the way you're adding the, um, what was it, the, your custom context, your field mm -hmm. that you add, if you need that to happen alongside the code instead of at the beginning of your, of your span. Say that one more time. So I've, I've got my, yeah. So your beeline with span, I think your GraphQL operation field, mm -hmm. I, I'm not sure it goes there. Oh, like should I add it as context, you mean? Yes. So beeline add context. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's try and then, that and see if that shows up. Okay. What I missed something. B line is not defined. Oh, okay. Then I. That's oh, that's. Oh, this. that's over there. Yeah, in your B other line. And we're running. Refresh. Here we go. Start the subscription. You got a fan in the chat. What's up, Java Grunt? Um, so then let's run this query again. We've got things happening. And let's see if we can get GraphQL. Man, it really doesn't want to. Yeah, nothing found there. Um, oh, it did find span field this time. That's interesting. It's not nothing, okay. I guess. Or wait. So it found so it, but I it didn't use it. That's that's a, hmm. all right. I think I got to do a remedial course in the node beeline. <laughs> I think I, um, I need to, uh, I maybe, th this may have just been a, like getting into subscriptions may have been the wrong, the wrong thing to try right out of the gate. Uh, mm. Just because it's, this is like, this is definitely the most confusing mm. part of, of building servers, I think, is when you get into any kind mm. of real time stuff. So yeah. probably this is just my fault for doing way too much stuff here. Um, Maybe what I can do is like move this trace down. I wonder, yeah, because maybe that'll help because then it'll mm -hmm. run all yeah, of this stuff. Yeah, you want you want to start your traces. Maybe I should have said that earlier. You want to start your traces at like the highest possible, like earliest possible point in when the code's running. Oh, uh, interesting. Because you okay. want to like cover all that ground. So um, maybe what I'll do then is I'll put the trace up here, and then and then and then also 
like your root span, you, you want it to wrap around that early point in the code because it's your each span sort of contains its children. Oh, okay. Okay. So let me get this yeah. out and then we'll get this out. And I missed a thing. What did I miss? God. This part. There we go. All right. So we'll take that part out. And instead of doing it this way, we will. Maybe just do it this way. So the whole app now runs inside of this um, main main span. And I will finish my trace outside of it. All of that is async, which I don't know why that's async. Main. Hmm. I don't know. Let's try it and see what happens. So let's go here. We'll do this. Oh my goodness, we are so over time. Um, we gotta. Oh. We got to wrap this on up, but let's, uh, let's do this. We, we have done this call and now I want to see if GraphQL operation got, it didn't. So, so I think what we're finding is that I have a very complicated thing to instrument here. Um, but what we found that was really nice is that for the, the happy path of like doing standard GraphQL queries, uh, this works so well out of the box with like no no issues. So um, we can just say Twitch username equals J Langsdorf, and we can run this query. And do we not do this in the Might last? Might need 10 to minutes? expand it out. Yeah. And is it is it uh, not quoted? Oh, I think it's Twitch. Uh... Yeah, remove the quotes, maybe. There it is. So no quotes. Um, yeah. But so then we can, you know, this just like this just works, and we get this beautiful trace where everything immediately shows us kind of what happened, where it went, what it took, and all mm -hmm. I had to do to make that work was install the beeline. Everything else mm -hmm. that we did today was me trying to instrument GraphQL subscriptions, which is like async on top of WebSockets on top of all sorts of things. So mm -hmm. um, with that, Shelby, where should people go if they want to uh, learn more? Um, follow me on Twitter. Um, uh, the Honeycomb uh, website has lots of resources, especially the blog. I help run the Honeycomb blog. Um, and we'll be posting more soon about in introductions to observability. Um, and I also, you've inspired me now. I'm going to sit down and I'm going to really learn um, how to instrument asynchronous app, uh, node apps. Um, and so I might even just do a stream where I try and do exactly what you're doing today on, yeah. on a similar application or even on your code. Awesome. Um, and that's, you do that on, uh, on Twitch? Yes. Um, just my first last name, Shelby Spies. Excellent. Uh, my shout out command is broken. Or wait, is it? Did I just do it wrong? There it goes. Hey, so at least something I built works. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, Shelby, thank you so, so much. Uh, one more yeah. quick shout out to our sponsors, uh, Netlify, Fauna, Sanity, and Auth0 for kicking in to make uh, make it possible to have white coat captioning here to do the captions for us. Um, make sure you go check out the show schedule because we've got a lot of really exciting stuff coming up. Uh, later this week, we've got Monica Powell coming on to teach us about web mention, which is really, really exciting. Um, next week, we've got Ben Elegbodu. Um, next week is also the, the Jamstack Conf, which if you have not gotten a ticket for that, it's free, it's fun. Um, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be a lot of good time. So make sure you go and uh, get your ticket for that. Jamstack Conf ticket here. Um, 
yeah, go go get that. Uh, chat, as always, thank you for hanging out with us, Shelby. Thank you again so, so much. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, chat, stay tuned. We're going to raid, and we will see you next time.